Hey everyone, Mac is back. Today we're going to talk about your wall setup. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you're going to be attacked at some point in this game. You can live under a bubble as long as you want, um, and maybe you won't be attacked, but you're going to be attacked. I'm telling you, you're going to forget to, to bubble. You're going to something's going to happen along the way where, and you're, you're eventually probably going to want to fight because this game's about fighting for the most part. Um, you know, you can play in events. And just stay bubbled and have still have fun. That's great. You know, that's how, however you want to play the game. Uh, but I, this, you want to set up your wall to a, a certain, to the best you can. So if you are attacked, that you're able to defend it as the best of your ability. So let's let's go look at it. So the first aspect of your wall is the formation. So this is exact same type of thing that you do when you attack. So you get to choose which formation that you want, and you can have that as long as you have them all unlocked. So you can see there's six formations here. Um, the bowmen are always going to be in the back unless you don't have any other of the front three troops. Then if you only have bows and they go straight to the front and that's one of the uh, formations, one of the um, uh, ways you can build your account as well. What I recommend for free to play is to go to all for bows. And yeah, you'll probably get some of these other uh, troop types in here as well. But you would you probably want to throw them in your shelter or get them away because they actually hinder you when you if you have them as a front line to be able to to tank for the bows because then the bows don't get as many shots off as they should or could. But what you want to do is if you're not gall bows and say you have a formation that you want, you need to choose that formation here. Um, so the big thing here is to kind of choose a formation that you have a lot of uh, frontline health and defense because that's really, really big to be able to tank. Um, and you, and you, you need that flexibility as well to be able to change from different two different uh, front lines or, and back lines as well because it'll be vital because if you get attacked and say you're trying to, maybe you're trying to tank, maybe you're not, but say you get attacked with, you have imp, uh, imp spears and they hit you with like a, you know, uh, an imp cav and that's really gonna hurt. That's gonna, that's the pure counter here, which is really, really tough for this. Now, if they see this, you you need to go in, you need to change that front line. If they hit you with that imp cav, then you, you need to go straight to probably what the, uh, probably a cav spear or a cav imp, probably a cav spear would probably be the best because that cav is going to counter their front line, be neutral to the second line, and then once that infantry front line of theirs is getting is is dead, then those spears will run into those cavs and annihilate them. So that that's something of that like kind of flexibility is what you're really going to need. But the big crux of this video is about which commanders do you want to put on your walls. So you can see the ones that I have here now, and I'll tell you the reason why I have these commanders here in a second, but first I wanted you to take note that your dragons, both of them, if they're in the castle, will defend. If you hover over here, you can see defending dragons that are not on expeditions will uh, participate in the city defense. So if, you're, if your dragon's out gathering or is uh, hiding in another castle or you know something like that, then you'll lose that dragon and won't be in here to be able to help you defend. And here you want to check this box to set dragons in the city that are not defending dragons as substitutes in the city defense very very important now why do i have these commanders well i'll tell you why i have the, i follow the female setup myself so with layla in there i want i want females in here and to go along with that layla has total attack on hers so she buffs all troop types annie same thing total attack and total defense she buffs all troop types as well um, then we have selma who buffs the uh, cab and spear significantly, but also has total health to buff that front line. And Danny, who has uh, total uh, stats across the board, um, so very, very good buffing all troop types. So you just basically multiply these times three at the very least, maybe four if you have some bows in your castle as well. So Annie with the exact same thing also. But say you don't have these uh, commanders and you need, you have, you want to put other commanders in there. So let's go take it some, uh, look at some other formations. So the first thing to note here is that Layla is my lord, so I cannot take her out of the lineup. That's the one thing, because you, you don't want her out of the lineup. You want her in there to be able to defend because she is uh, she's very good, um, and she you, you want to keep your lord in there to get all the stats that you're going to get as well. Now, looking at other commanders that you're, you might want on your wall, you always want to look for total attack commanders because you want they're going to be buffing all troop types, and you want that flexibility. So, for instance, Seg is another good one. If you have him four stars, he'll have total defense and total attack, which is very, very good. Looking at other commanders like Kravras, if you have a bow setup, then yes, you want him in there. Otherwise, you don't. Lats is actually pretty good for uh, an infantry front line. Um, now, the reason I don't have Lats in there 
even though I may have like an infantry front line, is because if I have to switch my front line to like a spear or a cav, uh, then she becomes useless because she's she's I don't want to say useless because she'll she'll still buff the infantry attack, but you lose out on so much more if you have like say a, a ray in there because then a ray does infantry attack and some cav attack plus the total health. So she's very very good as well. Um, Julian is a, is a really good one for anyone you know, uh, who wants to put on the wall because he buffs all troop types um, at like 70%. So 70% across the board, that's really, really good. So, But to, just to compare that, if you look at Julian at 70%, that you can see it says 48 there, but it's actually 70% with his passive adding on to that. So it's like 70%, 72%. Um, so all you really need is to have like say Ray, who is probably better than Julian because you can see the infantry and cab attacks there are 64 you add the passes on, that's 90. So 90 and 90, that's 180% uh, to, the, to, uh, of attack that you're getting on there. Plus you're getting some health, 180%. Here you're getting about two, what I said, about 210%. So he might be a little bit better, I guess, than her with a 210%. Um, and he's a little more flex flexible as well when it comes to that. But, he, he, but she also gives that frontline health as well, which is, is important. So it's kind of a wash there. You probably want more attack. But that's just something else to consider. Kevin has total attack and health, very good for your front line. You're gonna leave Varus out. Uh, Jamie was another total attack uh, commander. So you keep looking at these total attack, like a bow. If you don't have many other commanders in there, he might be very, very good. Uh, someone to note though, who I don't have completely upgraded would be Simon. And Simon has that siege attack reduction of 20%. So that's really good plus his total attack. So if you get him maxed, I only have him at purple, he'll actually do, uh, he'll be very good because he'll help max troops as well. You can see there's 200,000 extra troops there I could put to defend and also the siege attack reduction plus the total attack. So that's very, very good if you have him, uh, if you have him upgraded high enough as well. Um, I'm waiting for the, I think it's, is it Egbert? Uh, he, well, he has the bow attack of 50%. So if you have a bow lineup, um, he's very good. He's gonna be very good in there for you. And the one thing you don't have to worry about is the amount of troops you don't have to worry about them being at level 10 because uh, they see here they're like 21,000 troops while well, you're you're defending with a specific amount of troops anyway so you really don't have to worry about that at all um, the big thing is you want to make sure that you you have like for instance you can these four or these four, uh, five here that I have is because I can go leave them on my wall and not have to worry about you know what my front line is or what my back line is or anything like that I can just leave them on there you know, I get attacked and I'm in the spear and they countered it, then I'll move to something else. Or maybe what you do is you, they attack you, say they say you counter them and uh, they see that you have an imp spear, you know, uh, uh, a wall up there right now or formation, you can you can just switch it over to something else, you know, switch it over to a, uh, uh, you know, a cab front line or something like that. Then they come in with their infantry in their front line, you annihilate them and it's a good counter to be able to do something like that. So I hope this gives you a better idea of the commanders that you want up here. Look for those totals uh, and then look for ones that actually will be able to buff frontline um, because looking at you know, like Layla, she buffs frontline cav, frontline spear, uh, total health. So uh, all front lines, total, total health and a, a total defense, all front lines and infantry. So I, I have all of them basically covered when it comes to buffing that frontline for health and uh, defense plus all those attacks that are in there as well, which really really help. So uh, until next time, Mac out.